Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and this is the second of three videos about hand quilting. In the first video, I showed the tools and supplies that you need and the basic hand quilting stitch technique. In this one, I'm going to show you some ways to make more intricate hand quilting without having to do any marking on your quilt. First, I want to show you what I mean by more intricate things. So you can just do simple quilting in the ditch along the seam lines. But one of the things that's really nice about hand quilting is you can do more intricate curves and things than you can do with a walking foot on the sewing machine. So for example, this is called orange peel. There's a circle here, and then there's a half circle here that halfway overlaps it in each quarter. So you get these wedge pieces that form a circle. And I've got a circle in each of these squares and then half circles that overlap the seams between the squares. That's something that would be more difficult to do on a sewing machine unless you're doing free motion quilting. Um, over in here, you can barely see it because this is such a heavily patterned fabric, but you can see that I've got some kind of basket weave stripes going on, and here I've got some fans, and um, someplace else in the quilt I have some stars. You can do a lot of different patterns with the hand quilting. Here you can see I've got some diamonds, uh, two concentric diamonds with a circle in the middle of it. You can have a lot of fun with it. Traditionally, people will mark on the quilts first. You can have a stencil and pounce on it with chalk dust, or there are various kinds of markers and things that will erase. I don't like to mark on my quilts. If I marked the whole quilt first, it takes me so long to hand quilt that any chalk marks would disappear long before I got to them. And anything where I draw on a finished quilt makes me very, very nervous. So I like to do things where I don't mark on the quilt first. And for that, I use a couple of different tools. For straight lines, I use tape. And for any kind of curved shapes, I use felt. So I'm gonna show you the tape first. I like using painter's tape. It uh, has a little bit less stickiness than a regular masking tape, although I've used masking tape as well. And what you're gonna do is lay it down and then quilt along the edge of it. So I've drawn some grid lines on here so we can imagine that these are quilt blocks. I wanted to show it to you on a solid muslin background so the, quilt is, so the stitches would really show up. So we're gonna have to pretend that we have some quilting lines. And what you can do with the tape is basically connect the intersections. I didn't tear this piece quite long enough but you can stick it down and then quilt along the edge of it. And I'm gonna show you that. One thing to be aware of is I can only quilt toward myself and I'm right-handed. So I always want the tape to sit on the right-hand side of the line that I'm going to quilt. If you're left-handed, you're gonna want it on the other side. But basically, well, I'll just show you and then you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna shift over to a chair because I'm used to quilting sitting down and that's gonna make things a little bit easier for me. Okay, so I'm just gonna start in the middle here because I'm not gonna quilt that whole line. That would be a very long video. So I'm starting my, I've got a knot in the end of my thread here. So I'm burying the needle. Remember I ran the needle through between the two layers. Pull it until that knot is right on the surface and then give it a little tug and it comes through. And now I'm just gonna do the regular quilting stitch and I'm gonna do it right along the edge of the tape. Oops, push that through too far. And you can see I'm pushing down on the tape here. And that's why I want the tape on the right hand side because I'm pushing down on it And if I were pushing down on the left-hand side, I would be tending to push the fabric away from the tape. By pushing down on the tape side, I'm pushing the fabric and the tape together. So it's just a little tip, but uh, it makes it much more successful. And you can reuse the strip of tape a few times before it loses all of its stick. Keep doing that. And 
then you just do regular stitches. I want to show you this little trick. One of the nice things about these rubber thimbles is if you've just been using lotion on your hands, it might your, your hands might slip off. You've got a very short needle and very little space to grab, especially if you load a lot of stitches on. And one thing that can be nice is you can use the rubbery side of that thimble to grab your needle, and it just gives you a little extra grab. So I'm going to cut this off and then show you um, how to use the felt for curved lines. So I'm going to peel this off, and you can see you get a nice, perfectly straight line. I use tape for any straight lines that I want to mark. It's a great way to get uh, things lined up with the intersections, and then, depending, you can use different widths of tape, and then you could set the next line of tape, a tape width apart from this one, and get perfectly evenly spaced parallel lines. It's very handy to have a whole stash of tape in different widths if you like to do a lot of straight lines. And with straight lines, you can do diamonds, you can do um, parallel lines, you can do grids, you can do um, stars, all kinds of different shapes. But sometimes you want to have curves. And for curves, I like to cut a template out of felt, and then I just pin it to the quilt. I use these bent um, basting pins. They're really handy for all of my, anytime I'm pinning things to a quilt. So I've got that pinned down, and then you can just quilt around that shape. So you could do circles, you could do hearts, you could do big chunky letters if you wanted to. Don't do anything too detailed because when it's covering the whole quilt, you're going to really lose a lot of that detail. But simple shapes are fantastic for this. You can even do, um, you can cut like a rickrack kind of piece and do some wavy lines. Anything that's a curve, you can cut out of felt and use that as your pattern. So I'm going to just, just going to do a little bit of stitching around that curve. Again, we're not going to do a ton of it, but we're going to do just a little bit of it. First, let me bury my needle here. Then I'm going to move to a chair so I can quilt a little more comfortably. Okay, so I've got my thread already buried, and now I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the tape. Work whichever direction around the circle. For me, that's counterclockwise, is going to give me, let my thumb be pressing down on the, the felt piece. But if you're left-handed, you're going to want to work your way clockwise around so that you're doing the same thing. Whoops, and I just pulled that thread out. When that happens, you really need to just clip off that knot and start again. Um, if you tried to pull it through, you risk tearing that fabric from that row of stitches. It's only going to do it on your first stitch, on your first kind of gathering of stitches. So let's just start over again. Pull that. It happens most often if I don't catch the batting in there, if I just go if I go underneath this top layer of fabric and above the batting. So you want to try and get the batting in there too. The batting is what's going to grab the knot a little more effectively. Okay, that feels a little, that's going to stick. So we're just going to do those stitches again. Just go nice and slow. You'll get faster at it the more you do it. I'm just going nice and slow so that you guys can see everything clearly. And you just work your way around that circle. Sometimes it'll hook on your basting pins. You can unhook it pretty easily. And then let's take this off. And you can see I've got a nice curve going there. And you just work that all the way around the circle and then you could scatter different circles, different places on the quilt or other shape or overlap them strategically and end up with a really nice curved design. So that's it. 
I use masking tape to mark any straight lines that I want to quilt and felt to mark any curved lines that I want to quilt. With, those, with a combination of those two things, you can do just about any design you want without ever having to draw on your quilt and worrying about whether those marks are going to come out later. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do big stitch quilting, which is really, really fun. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. I'll see you next time.